gets a little uncomfortable, doesn't it? I understand. Okay, uh, went to a great movie, just had to recommend it. Someone else did on a previous uh, comment, um, The Underdog, the Kurt Warner story. I, I remember this all happening. Um, and to, to know some of the background now, I'm telling you, fantastic movie, fantastic movie. Um, it's, it's really what cinema should be all about. Uh, entertaining, a story told, God's introduced into it, um, unlikely people experiencing what they've always dreamed of. It's just, it's, and, and what they work so hard to, to do. And it reminded me of a, of a question of, of um, a, a recent comment. I think it was Marcy or Marcia. Marcia, I think, is her name. And she, she said, why, why are the Jews chosen? And what does it mean to be a chosen people? Brilliant question. Brilliant question. And, and since I read that, I think it was yesterday, I've been thinking about that a lot. And I'll give you some, some of my ideas. And, and I'm, you know, probably, probably winging it a little bit here, um, but you guys are used to that. So chosen to me is, is an interesting phrase. Um, I think it's section 105 that um, in the Doctrine and Covenants where we, it, it, it almost suggests that, and if not actually doing it, that, that we can choose to be chosen. But a people, a people is different, in my opinion, than choosing to be chosen as an individual, okay? Um, and of course, we all watch the movie, The Chosen, or Chosen, I think it is the chosen, and and I don't know if it's referring to the apostles necessarily, just the apostles, or all those that follow. Of course, Mary is chosen, right? So uh, Mary Magdalene. So so there's it, it would have to include the, the followers of, of Christ, the chosen ones. So, but but as a people, the children of Israel, why why were they? Why are they and why were they the chosen people? Well, here's a couple of thoughts, or more than a couple, but here's a few. Here, here are a few thoughts. I think we need to go to the pre-mortal life. Um, and I, I do believe that there are things somewhat earned for how we kept that estate with, with how we end up in this estate. And it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, our, our financial or our physical well-being, but a relationship with God is definitely, through his son, Jesus Christ, is definitely part of something that, that we were able to perhaps experience in the previous existence. And because of that, we find ourselves in, in a particular situation. And, and I, I have to go back to Abraham on this one. That Abraham somehow, uh, you know, like um, Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I ordained thee or sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Something like that. <laughs> um. I, 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 a prophet is awesome and great, but to be, to be basically the father of the covenant, which Abraham was, he, uh, um, it's, it's the, it's the song in, in sound of music, you know, um, something in my youth or childhood, I must have done something good. Um, but Something in my pre-mortal life. <laughs> Abraham did something good. You know, something like that. That, that 
that started the whole ball, ball rolling. Now, this, this next statement will, will get a little controversial, but, but I do think that there's something about the land of Israel that is sacred and special and chosen, chosen, um, which goes along with the Abrahamic covenant in a, in a sense, because it's all centered around Jesus Christ, because being a chosen people meant that the Savior came from that lineage. That's the chosen. That's the covenant, in my opinion. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their subsequent wives that birthed those children. Jacob's names changed to Israel. He has 12 sons, um, and then two adopted grandsons, Ephraim and Manasseh from Joseph, um, the tribe of Levi isn't left out, but they're the priesthood and they're distributed among all the tribes. Re Reuben, I believe, is somewhat disqualified. So Ephraim and Manasseh take over and then that's where you come up with, with the 12, with 12. Uh, then you have the 10 tribes in the Northern Kingdom, uh, uh, Jer Jeroboam, or is it Rehoboam? Jeroboam. Rehoboam, the southern kingdom, after Solomon, the kingdoms are split and divided. Of course, after David and then Solomon. And uh, they, they had a united kingdom. And, and that land, that land, there's something sacred and special about it. And particularly uh, Mount Moriah, um, where... Uh, and then David purchased the threshing floor and then Solomon built the temple there and Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac there, proving himself of what he was in the pre-mortal life, in my opinion, and sealing the deal, sealing the deal. And, and you know, in some sense, it should be uh, the, the Abram covenant because the, the covenant was actually made when his name was Abram before it was changed to Abraham, uh, his new name, if you will. Um, uh, Jacob to Israel, his, his new name. And uh, because they're, they're, the covenant is passing through them. And then we've talked about this before where Judah um, and what he did to protect his brother Benjamin when Joseph, uh, you know, hid the goblet in there and all that story, we've talked about that. Judah becomes the, hey, take me, take me, as a, as a, a symbol and, and a foretelling of, of where Christ is gonna, the lineage that Christ is gonna come through. So all these things take place in a designated chosen land with a designated chosen tribe. And the big question is, is why would they be chosen if they are gonna be the one that's gonna kill the, the Messiah, to kill Christ? And here's, here's my opinion. If you look at the, if you look at the land mass, it's oh so tiny. It's about like the state of New Jersey in size. Um, compared to the whole mass that's against them. They indeed did kill one of their own who, prof who was prophesied to come and save them and they killed him. Well, what more of an example could a chosen people in the land be than small, wicked, cast out, trampled underneath, and deservingly so for what they did, prophesied that that would happen? What more of a miracle could be performed than for Christ to redeem that people? 
And that is why, in my opinion, they are chosen. Because if they can be chosen, all of us can be chosen if we choose to be chosen. So I don't know if I explained that very well. It, it felt good in here and in here, but I don't know if it felt good coming out. Story of my life. Um, but but I, I do think that is a brilliant question and one that we ought to think about all the time. But Christ, let's say he saves a, the perfect family and that has everything and everything's going great and everything's good and wonderful. Um, that's, that's great, that's nice, we all need that. Um, but if he can save the lowest of the low and redeem them, that's a chosen people. And that's a chosen God who chose his son and his son chose to do what he had to do. Now, it's interesting we talk about, um, because we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the Book of Mormon is the keystone, the arch, you pull that stone away at the top of the arch and the arch falls. The Book of Mormon is a keystone of our religion. So we talk a lot about the promised land or the land of promise and how wonderful this land is. And we could say the Americas, we could say North America. I, I, I don't want to get into that on this video, but let's just say the Americas because that's where the New Jerusalem is said to be built according to Joseph Smith in um, uh, the Article of Faith, uh, number 10, I believe. And, and then recently in 2020, April, uh, then Ensign uh, was the only reference to the New Jerusalem given by President Nelson, okay? By President Nelson was that Article of Faith that the, the New Jerusalem will be built on the American continent on the American continent, no, I, you know, whatever that means. But, but you notice that this land, and I say this because I'm, I'm in Utah, Utah, and um, part of the North America, part of the United States of America, it's never known as the chosen land. It's the promised land. And a promise is just, a, is just that. Um, I promise to give you this. I promise to provide this for you. Uh, that's different than chosen. And I, I haven't really researched this fully, but I don't think this land, the, Amer the Americas, is, is known as the chosen land, but the promised land. So I think there's a difference there. So we have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Israel, and then Judah, and then the promise, or excuse me, the chosen comes through that lineage, and it's and it's Jesus Christ, and. That's what the covenant is. It, the covenant is him. That's the promise of the covenant. Okay. Anyway, so that was one question. Great. And I know we're going to have a lot more people answer that. So thank you for that question. And I know you're not just necessarily asking me. I know you're throwing it out there because there's a lot of brilliant minds out there. And a lot of, uh, a lot of you have... Um, just awesome questions, and, and not just questions, but, but answers to those questions. Um, there was another question of all the, all the, why would you pick Watcher Palmer? Because there's so many, you know, the downright evil uh, connotation of, of a Watcher in, in uh, the Bible, particularly. And it's true. And it's one of the reasons why I, I picked it, just to kind of create a little bit of this. It's kind of like the word serpent. You know, we, we think of serpent in the Garden of Eden, but then, but then you have the brazen serpent, which re represents Jesus Christ. 
And you, you, you know, it's, kind of, it's, it's one of those things, but I'll refer to a scripture. Um, if you ever run into me, I'll have some cards on me and I'll give you a card and I'm just gonna show it to you quick <laughs> because it has some personal information on there that I don't want right out for everybody. Um, but if I run into you and we talk and I see the, the, the light in your eyes, I'll give you a card and we can communicate, but it just says watch your Palmer on it with some information. And, and on the back of that card is a scripture. It's kind of in fine print, so I gotta put these guys on. But it's Matthew 24, 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Matthew 24, right? And, and so from that scripture is where I really picked up the name Watcher. Um, I used to be prepaid preacher Palmer, <laughs> kind of catchy. And I've talked about it before. Um, I've always liked to preach and uh, prepaid that had reference to nobody owes me anything and and Jesus paid the price for me and so I'm 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 I've I've got a prepaid credit card <laughs> uh, and and I preach the reason why I changed that was um I was getting a little bit of grief um just f from people I respected that um, it, it had the connotation that I was um, uh, like ordained or called to do this, um, which I'm not. I, I, I in terms of 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 being set apart and hands placed upon my head and all that, I'm not. Um, I feel like I'm called from above to to express the the things on here uh on this on this channel so anyway that's that's kind of where that all came from um uh, but I feel good about calling myself watcher palmer and and I'll defend that even though there's some negative uh things about being a watcher but we could pick a lot of words that have that that can do that okay so that's that was to answer that question um Another really cool insight, and I got this from an email uh, from from one of our from one of the cows cows community of watchers. So a lot of people, and I've got the cow picture there from one of our the, who painted that from uh, one of our great uh, community of watchers, and uh, she's awesome, and her calendars are amazing, calendars, right? Um, anyway. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I, I got an email. So I don't I don't want to mention names because sometimes people are sensitive about names and that's why they've emailed me. Um but but really cool insight and and I don't want to sound like I, I know everything, but I actually had this insight a few years ago. The insight's this in, in the versions that, that we read of the creation and particularly Adam and Eve, Adam is the one that's told not to partake of the fruit absent from Eve. And it's really kind of an interesting uh, thing to think about. Um, uh, and, and we have, you know, we've mentioned this before, we have Genesis, we have uh, Book of Moses, the inspired version of, of, of the creation. Then we have Abraham, a por portion of all that. And then we have the temple for those of us and portions of the Book of Mormon, really. So, so we have a lot of uh, resources with the creation and you, you kind of have to triangulate it all, I, in my opinion, and not, not go, well, this contradicts this and this. No, no, you, you, you bring them all together and, and where they cross, you go, ooh. And this is one of those where, where several of the, the, the uh, versions of the, of the creation and partic particularly the relationship with Adam and Eve and and uh, the gods in in Abraham, or um, God in in Genesis, um, but we always have even in Genesis we have let us let us right so so 
There's, there's more than one. And I think we have to have Heavenly Mother in there because of the scripture I brought up last time in there. Um, leave your mother and father, Adam and Eve. Where's, where's mom? <laughs> you know, uh, how do we leave mom if, if we don't have a mom? Kind of, right, okay, so that kind of makes sense. So that's an interesting thing. Think about that um, in, in conjunction with everything. Um, so it could have been more of a situation where, where, um, God, we'll just say God, um, uh, tells Adam not to partake of the fruit. Then Adam in turn would tell Eve that there's that possibility. The other possibility is that they, they were together, but it just mentions Adam because he's responsible perhaps. I'm just throwing things out there. I, I think it's a great observation and a great question. And and um, I, I know some of you will have answers. The other interesting thing is in the accounts that I looked at too, similar to going along this, is Adam was naming the animals before Eve was even, you know, a, a rib. <laughs> uh, before she comes into the picture, Adam's naming the animals. Maybe that's why I got kind of messed up, maybe, because some of the names are really weird. But I don't know. Uh, th think about those things. Um, I think they have meaning, and I think, I think there's a reason why um, we go, wow, I never realized that. And you stumble upon it, and then you start thinking about it. So, so those are some really good questions, really good observations by by many of you uh that that comment and and contribute to this channel uh the other one that just popped up today was on the rapture they'd kind of heard me talk about that and they're like ah, you know i came from a baptist background and joined the church and never heard anybody talk about the rapture in the church and and this person actually you can read it in the comments said <laughs> When he, when he joined the church, his Baptist friends said, family basically said, well, you're going to be left behind now. You're not going to get caught up in the rapture. Well, uh, obviously, rapture is not even in scripture, but it does, does mean to be snatched or, or grabbed or caught, uh, caught up. And where I like to go, and I haven't... Um, um, really done a lot of prep on this. But if we go to section 88, uh, and we, we we can really come up with some really good scriptures, latter-day scriptures. There's a ton in the Bible that, that would refer to it. But um, And I did a video on this, and I, I think it was, uh, is it Anita Baker? Anita Baker. Caught up in the rapture of love, nothing else can compare. When I feel the magic of you. Great song. She was a religious, started as a gospel singer. And then she that, that song became her kind of signature song is caught up in the rapture of love. The rapture. So... I think that's the name of the video I did, caught up in the rapture maybe. But uh, if you go to section 88, verse 95, and there shall be silence in the heaven for the space of half an hour. And immediately after shall the curtain of heaven be unfolded as a scroll is unfolded. After it is rolled up and the face of the Lord shall be unveiled. And the saints, okay, now here's the key. So verse 96 now, section 88. And the saints that are upon the earth who are alive, shall be quickened and caught up to meet him. Woo, that's the rapture. That's the rapture. And so um, there's, a, there's another one in 78, 21, 78, or is it 76? It might be 78. Um. Well, let's read it. Um, yeah, 21 and 22. So, so yeah, yeah, it is section 78, verse 21 and 22. For ye are the church of the firstborn, and he will take you up in a cloud and appoint every man his portion. And he that is faithful and is wise steward shall inherit all things. Amen. 
So, so these are kind of the latter day. So caught up to meet him. Now verse 97, and they who have, back in, in uh, 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 section 88, um, and they who have slept in their graves shall come forth, for their graves shall be open, and they also shall be caught up to meet him in the midst of the pillar of heaven. So this is pretty cool because it's a, it's, it's a two event. It, it really doesn't give a time frame you know, when one will happen before the other, uh, it, it does say that those, it, 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 there's an indication that those that are alive will be quickened before those who come forth out of the grave because they're mentioned first. So, so there's a possibility that, that if we're watching and, and we're serving and we're doing good and we're, we're paying attention, that we're going to get caught up. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping for that. Um, and then I'd like to come back. I'd like to come back as, as a translated being where my knees and my back and my ankle <laughs> hair would be great, you know, where I'm not necessarily uh, uh, celestialized or or um, resurrected, but but just you know things don't bother me. Um, you know, like like the three disciples that that were here in the Americas, that Christ said, "Okay, I know what you want, and you want the same as what my disciple John wanted." And and that would be really cool. And then and then work for a thousand years, um, you know, get workers comp and and get. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but but um, <laughs> get retirement. <laughs> you know, the bennies would be great. A thousand years of employment under the Savior. Can you imagine what the retirement would be? It'd be awesome. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. So I, I'm hoping I'm alive so that I can be quickened because I would love to go up to meet him and then come back down. That's what the three disciples did. So that's that's what I talk about, quickening, being caught up, which which I use rapture a lot because I know it triggers some people and it's just my personality to, to get people, you know, I don't know why I do it, but, but I do it. Um, but it's not, rapture is not mentioned in any scripture, either Latter-day scripture or or the Bible, it's not mentioned in there, but it's just a word that that's, that's been used, and it's I think it's a great word. So hopefully that answers some questions there. But I think I think we have some really good references in in Scripture. There might have been some others I didn't mention, but uh, but I uh, I do in in other. Uh, but but even in in Matthew twenty four, you know, two people are going to be doing this. And next thing you know, it's just one and they're gone. And someone else is doing this in the field and boom, they're gone. You know, one of them's left and one of them's gone. It, 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 it's clear there's, there's something going on. Thessalonians talks a lot about it too. So we have that. So I think I've talked about some of the questions that have come up. Um, okay, now if you don't want to hear anything <laughs> about the jabber mask, you can just shut it off now. But, oh, my goodness, our president, you know, to continue to blame the unvaccinated for all the problems in the world. Uh, it's just it's just amazing where. Um, and I, and it, it, here's the thing. A lot of really good comments come and I've explained this before. I get an email version um, it's not something I can respond to, but I get an email version of many of the comments, not all of them. I, I, I put that in as a request from YouTube to get them as an email, but the, I don't know how they choose or what, but I get a lot of comments that never make it onto the channel. And a lot of them have to do with the topic, you know, the, the poke or the or the, the the face covering and they're wonderful and I get the email version of it and and it's it's great but it, it won't show up censorship 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 that's that's all this is and it just continues now 
Everybody said, okay, we'll go to Rumble and, you know, do this and do that. And I'm not going to do it right now. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. And, and we're going to, we're going to continue to fight the fight here. But, um, it, it, it's, it's clearly, clearly, uh, <laughs> you, you know that it's fake and phony and a lie when you ha do not address at all natural immunity. Um, you just know that if you're not going to mention that, where you've gone through it, you've beat it, and then you have antibodies, and you have immunity, and you go forward, much more effective than the jab in in that in 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 getting it again or or you know having it so um to continue to blame and to pit these people against each other we shouldn't act you know people choose have a choice if you want it great if you don't want it great but but to say you're the evil one for not and you're causing this 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 dilemma is it's it's it it makes no sense because if if the jab is the answer, then you shouldn't have any worries. But now they've admitted that you can still get it and you can still transmit it, even with being fully vaxxed. It just reduces, you know, the the, the symptoms, um, and, th and that seems to be be the answer. So so if you're not jabbed, then what what? Uh, why would that be negative to somebody else that is why why would why would you pose a threat to them it makes no sense it makes no sense um do, oh this is just earth shattering this study that they just did they found that many masks that people use are ineffective i i couldn't i could hardly believe myself thinking, are you kidding me? That is, uh, I had no idea that most masks don't have any effect on keeping out the virus. <laughs> and that just, that just came out. I mean, this is breaking news, breaking news. Basically, you have to be in a bubble with, with fresh ox oxygen coming in, you know, to not have it. And everything else is like, eh, you know, um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's just, it just, it just goes on. So, um, so yeah, the, the answer is, uh, from the, from the government is just get the jab, all of them and, and the booster and, and then that's it. Then, then everything's okay. And I know a lot of people. I have a lot of friends. Uh, no, I do. I, I that that have been in that situation, and they're still still getting it, and and still, and, and a lot of them are still having some some real severe symptoms of it, uh, even though they've they've been fully. Um, it's interesting too that it. You remember if it, if you were if you received the jabs, all of them. Um, your life could just be normal. You could do everything. Not that's not the case anymore. You you still have to get tested most of the time, and you still have to per, and and produce a negative COVID test, and still wear the mask. So why did you get why get the the the, the jab if you need to do all that? So I'll just keep pounding on that. Um, as long as it doesn't make sense to me, I'll, I'll keep doing that. So I think that's it. Um, I'm not supposed to say, um, too. That was another, someone criticized me for that. I, I have been getting pounded on some other, uh, YouTube channels that I either appeared on or, you know, made some comments or whatever. Um, you know, at first it kind of jolts you. Cause, cause I look at other YouTube channels, obviously. And, and then I, I see a, a whole string of, of these things blasting the watcher. 
<laughs> and at first I'm like, Ugh! and then I go, well, I'm sorry. Um, my bad. And then I think, you know, maybe, just maybe in some things, uh, what I'm saying is over the target. And, and because it's over the target, it, it gets a little sensitive. And I know I bring up things like the New Jerusalem and where it may be. I bring up things like rapture. I talk about, um, uh, you know, so I have a pretty strong opinion about the geography of the Book of Mormon. And, and, and I know it triggers certain people um, that are vocal but for the most part, you guys put up with me. I put up with you. <laughs> and it's a lot easier for me to put up with you than you to put up with me. I know that. But, um, but I, I, I feel compelled to continue to do this. Um, I, I just, it's just in me. And I want to keep it as open as possible. But if it gets a little attacky or vicious, I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna delete and block, and I've done that. I've done that. Uh, now, if it's on someone else's YouTube, I have no control. You know, I'm just like, well, <laughs> there you go. But if it's on mine, I'll do it. And I I know I've been criticized for for doing that, but it's like I said in the last video. I think there's a way to contend without being contentious. And I, I have to work on that myself. But I know that, um, that I'm not right all the time. I know that. I know that. Uh, and even though I have an opinion, sometimes I'll say, I don't even know if I believe this, but, you know, it's like, it's like when I brought up the, 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 the two witnesses or the two prophets slain in the street could possibly be the two, the two scriptures. And I, st I still feel that that's a possibility because the, it's symbolic. They're symbols. Um, mentioned as candlesticks, mentioned as, as olive trees. So um, I, I know that triggers some people, but, and, and I don't mind a, 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 a either, a, you, you don't even need to call it a debate, but a disagreement, you know, like, ah, oh, that can't be, and, and, and that's fine. I would never delete any comments like that. But when they get personal or just kind of nasty, then I, I toss them out. And it makes me feel good to do that. So that kind of happened. That, that's, that's what's happening there. Um, it's, I'm excited for this year. Someone put a comment in the comment section. Is it 2022, you know, just with the numbers, 2022, or is it 2020 T-O-O, -O, 22 again, you know, or 2020 again. Did that make sense? It was really clever. Um, so I love that. But I'm very optimistic for this year. Uh, not that things are going to get back to normal. I don't want them to go back to normal. I'm looking for Jesus to come. I'm wanting to be quickened. Now, my wife thinks that the rapture is simultaneous with basically with Christ's second coming. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, so, so you have a, a in, in, in the other Christian denominations, you have a, 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 a pre-tribulation, you know, if you, if you go along with the seven year, tribulation, three and a half and three and a half. A lot of people think that you have a three and a half period, which is um, kind of a, a man-made version of tribulation brought on by men. And the last half is God preaching his sermon, so three and a half years, and then and then comes Christ. The And, and then within that, within the Christian world, um, not, not everybody, um, but Baptists for sure. Um, then, then you have people that have their pre-trib, mid-trib, and, and post-trib, uh, rapture. And, and then you, you have those factions. And I, for a long time, have been a mid-tribber. 
if you will. Um, I think at some point, Christ is gonna is 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 gonna say, "Come on up. You've endured enough, and it's time to get this show on the road." And I need an army. Um, I have a lot already, but I need some more. And I want you part of the team. And so I'm going to quicken you, change your body, give you some really uh, crash courses, uh, and then send you back down. And we're going to get to work. And I'm going to I'm going to be on the throne in Jerusalem. And and you're going to be in Tooele working with the folks out there. Um, doing whatever you do. I just picked Tooele because it was on our mission, in our mission, that where we served, and I loved it. So I just, it just popped into my head. So wherever it is, I'm there. Uh, and, and, and that's what I'm hoping for. But my wife thinks it will be right as the resurrection is happening, Christ's second coming, and then those that are alive will just be caught up and changed and you know, tra translated, not transfigured, but translated for, for that period of time uh, to serve with the Lord. And she's probably right, because she's usually always right. Um, but I'm still sticking to, <laughs> to hoping, you know, and, and watching. And that's what I do. I love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.